Hey there, it's me, Lottie, and today what we're going to do is a used book haul, which is my whole spring and summer TBR for sure. Now, I love thrifting anyway, and used books, I always am on the lookout for used books, whether it's at a thrift store, those little libraries that are like so cute, or when my library has a used book sale. Now, that is like a treasure chest waiting to unfold. And today I went... And um, it was sort of like a little date with myself, which was really nice. I allowed myself to take as much time as I wanted and just kind of go through each section. Now, I have a lot of stuff here, probably more than enough for one video. I think I might do two videos or possibly even three because I have like children's books. Hmm. And I have a whole lot of my own books. <laughs> well, we'll see. But what I am going to do is share with you a few of the things that I got. And like I said, this is going to pretty much be my whole spring and summer, probably into fall, because a girl buys some books and a girl does not read as fast as the girl buys books. If you too have that problem, drop I love books in the comment section below. I can appreciate that. I have a little bit of wine here. I just got in the house from working in the garden. I am excited because these two garden beds that have been being installed, I had some friends helping me and then I was finishing up kind of and they're done. So I'm excited. I'm tired though. Had to come in, change my clothes, get relaxed, get a little glass of wine, and now I'm ready to talk about books. Okay, so where do I want to start? I think I have all kinds of stuff here. Let me start with the one that makes the most sense coming from being in the garden. So I've been wanting to do a lot more environmental reading because I want to start doing more environmental writing. There are whole conferences devoted to environmental writing. And, you know, I got a little thorough in me, I think. I could be a little thorough, a little Lottie on Lottie Pond. <laughs> anyway, I have a few things here. So the first one is my garden book by Jamaica Kincaid. I don't know a lot about Jamaica Kincaid, but the little bit I know makes me want to know even more. I know she's a Caribbean author. She's from Antigua. And it says here, Jamaica Kincaid's first garden in Vermont was a square plot in the middle of her front lawn. There, to the consternation of more experienced gardener friends, she planted only seeds of flowers she liked best. In My Garden book, she examines all that she loves about gardening and plants in the same spirit, generously, passionately, and with sharp idiosyncratic discrimination. So, and there's more, but I think that's enough. Um, I was happy to find this and I am looking forward to reading it and learning more about her because I believe she's a professor at an HBCU and she's written a lot more books. So really excited about this one. This book here is called My Name is Chellis. Chilis, Chilis, and I'm in recovery from Western civilization. Now, you know, I had to grab this one. It's by Chilis Glendening, and it says, 
what is the relationship between addiction and the ecological crisis? How can we use the lessons of individual recovery to address our collective need to heal society and the earth? So she's a psychologist. She works in the field of eco-psychology, which I'm very interested in. And she's written a few more books. And um, and so this, this just sounded really good to me. I'm not going to say that after everything because, of course, they sounded really good to me. <laughs> this is by Helen Hoover, and it is called A Place in the Woods. And I did like this little scene here. It says it's the category of nature writing. Helen Hoover and her husband Adrian were trailblazers in the American back to the land movement. Well ensconced in their professional lives in Chicago, they made the decision to follow their dream of a simple existence, pulling up their stakes and plunging into the wilds of Northern Minnesota. Oh, and this was published first in 1969. And it describes how the Hoovers gradually adapted to the rigors of wilderness survival. Hmm. I didn't know it was I didn't know it was that old. This is gonna be good. Okay, I'm not gonna say that every time. Okay. The wood for the trees. One Man's Long View of Nature. This is the beautiful cover. Can you see that? It's beautiful. Hard cover. It seems like, I don't know, it's just really beautiful. Um, says here, a few years ago, the award-winning scientist Richard Fortney, it's by Richard Fortney, um, purchased four acres in the woodlands of Chiltern Hills of Oxfordshire, England. The wood for the trees is the joyful, lyrical portrait of what he found there over the course of one year, an exuberant biography of a small patch of land and of the miraculous web of life that it sustained. Looks like there's a chapter for each month. So that, look at that. It's just beautiful, right? That's gorgeous. Okay. Risotto with Nettles, which sounds delicious. A memoir of food. Two of my favorite things, a memoir and food. <laughs> and I mean, already she started with sort of a wild selection. Nettles are not born, you know, here. In America, you can't find nettles in a grocery store. Now, maybe that's not the case in Italy. It says, born in Milan. This is by Anna Del Conte. Uh, born in Milan, Anna Del Conte grew up in Italy in a gentler time. When war came to Italy, everything changed. Her family had to abandon their apartment and the city for the countryside where the peasants still ate well, but life was dangerous. As a teenager, Anna became used to throwing herself into ditches as the strafing planes flew over and was imprisoned twice. Her story is informed and enlivened by the food and memories of her native land. From lemon granita to wartime risotto with nettles, from vitello tonnato to horse meat roll, from pastas to porcini. And then she moved to England, married an Englishman, wrote books about food or cookbooks. I don't know. It's a memoir of life seen through food. It says there are mouthwatering recipes included. You know, I like that. And then here we have Orchard House. This appealed to me, the cover appealed to me, and the catch line here, how a neglected garden taught one family to grow. I love memoirs, first of all, and this is a memoir also by Tara Austin Weaver. And it says, Tara Austin Weaver can't get the Seattle real estate listing out of her head. 
Any sane person would have to would have seen the abandoned property for what it was, a ramshackle half acre filled with dead grass, blackberry vines, and trouble. That sounds kind of familiar. <laughs> but Tara sees potential and promise, not only for the edible bounty of the garden could yield for her family, but the personal renewal she and her mother might reap along the way. So begins Orchard House, a story of rehabilitation and cultivation of land and soul. And it goes on from there, but <laughs> doesn't that sound good? You know, I just, you know, I, I'm trying to live a very land and nature connected life. And I want to know how others did it, are doing it. Are you embarking on a land connected life or, or wish to like through homesteading or I don't know, off grid living or just a little, I might, might just have little pots of herbs on your balcony of your apartment it's okay you know i'm not saying everybody has to have like <laughs> crazy wild acreage that's not the goal it's whatever you know reconnects you to nature so those are a few that i got from the non-fiction and biography section hmm i also found this in fiction the language of flowers by Vanessa Diffenbow. Diffenbow. In Victorian times, the language of flowers was used to convey romantic expressions. But for Victoria Jones, it's been more useful in communicating mistrust and solitude. After an isolated childhood spent in the foster care system, her only connection to the world is through its flowers and their meanings. Now 18 and emancipated from the system and nowhere to go, Victoria realizes she has a gift for helping others through the flowers she chooses for them. And it goes on from there. It says, as an unexpected encounter with a mysterious stranger has her questioning what's been missing from her life. And then she's forced to confront a painful secret from her past and must decide whether it's worth risking everything for a second chance at happiness. I'm trying to remember, did I get this in the, I don't know if this was a romance. I feel like it was not a romance and it was just in fiction, but still, that sounds good, the language of flowers. Okay, so while I'm in the vein of nature, I might as well keep all this in one vein because there's another there is another road down which I could travel with the remaining books, but instead I'm just going to, I'm going to do this here. <laughs> I, I'm not going to say what I was going to say. I was going to say I don't need another cookbook, but you know what? Maybe I do, and I'm going to enjoy this one. This is called The Earthbound Cookbook, 250 Recipes for Delicious Food and a Healthy Planet. Now, this was written quite a while ago. I think it was written in, what was this written? 2010. So it'll be interesting to see how it's held up. But I do like it's got in here stuff like understanding eco labels for meat, making sustainable seafood choices. It's gonna give me a lot to think about and in turn, share with all of you wonderful subscribers. Yes. So, ooh, Kalamata olive, Kal <laughs> Kalamata olive bread. That's kind of hard to say, Kalamata olive bread. I love olive bread. Oh, I might have to try that. So this really appealed to me because it says here, it merges mouth-watering meals with healthy, eco-friendly practices, right? And that's what I'm just trying to, you know, I'm just trying to slowly but surely shift into a more conscious way of living. So this was exciting to me. Maybe I don't need another cookbook. Maybe this is more than a cookbook. <laughs> and this one is good. 
This is another cookbook. The Minimalist Baker, Everyday Cooking, 101 Entirely Plant-Based, Mostly Gluten-Free, Easy and Delicious Recipes by Dana Schultz. Did I say the other one was by Myra Goodman? I'm sorry that I didn't say that this Earthbound cookbook, I should have said her name. Um, Myra Goodman. Okay. Everyday cooking. Look at that. Isn't that, look at that. Okay, first of all. And I love, I love a dark background when folks are doing food photography. The photography, so I was excited. Yeah, see, I was excited about this book because of the photography also. I like good food photography. I just do. And, and I was excited by some new recipes. So, you know, the thing of it is, I will get my enjoyment out of this book and then I might donate it right back to the library. You know, I only paid, um, so this is a hardcover. I paid two bucks for this. Hardcovers were $2. Paperbacks were a dollar. <laughs> okay, let's see, is there anything else I want to share? Because like I said, I got a lot of stuff here. I'm going to definitely do a second. Uh, I'll do a second. Um, okay, I'll do these two and then end it here. I'm going to do another video because I got so many more books here. I had a whole stack of kids books. Did I buy them for the grandkids? Or did I buy them for me? Because my grandkids, they're not as much into books as I wish they were. But I'm just going to keep on... I'm just keep on presenting the options, right? So I'm going to end on these notes, which were kind of for work. They're, you know, they're for work. Uh, this one's not just for work. The Joy of Fundraising. It says, how to stop suffering and start enjoying asking for money for your favorite cause by Terry Axelrod. And I'm in the nonprofit field sometimes. Um, I'm involved in a very exciting project that requires funding. <laughs> and, um, you know, why not? I can just work my way through this book and just see. Does it work? We'll see. And the last one I'm going to end with is this one. This is because I, um, part of my work, I facilitate retreats for usually nonprofits or organizations that want to do their annual retreat. And, and I host retreats in nature. So, and I'm always trying to retreat. I, that's probably why I do them because I love, I want to just be living on a retreat. <laughs> 20 minute retreats, revive your spirits in just minutes a day with simple self-led exercises. So I thought this might be good for creating activities in the retreats that I do. So you know, there's usually stuff that folks want to get through that's like maybe the planning of the year coming up or working through a specific problem. But there's also, you know, they want downtime. They want rejuvenation. They want restoration. So I thought this might have some good ideas for activities that I could use in my uh, facilitation and retreat hosting work. Okay. Okay. I hope you're doing well. I hope that these inspired you in some way to, uh, you know, these are ways that you can participate in an eco-friendly or more sustainable way is by thrifting your books. So where's your favorite place to thrift books from? Have you tried those little libraries? I am really intrigued by them and I'm looking forward to like, contributing to them, like downsizing my library and, you know, tucking some stuff in there. It's such a cute idea. I really like it. So stay tuned. There will be a part two. I got a lot of stuff here on this table. There'll be a, at least a part two. There'll probably be a part three for kids. Anyway, I hope you're doing well. I hope that you're taking really good care of yourself. 
until I see you in the next video. Take care.